Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And over the last few years, there's one man who has stole the hearts of TV viewers. He's the man from the hotel who can turn it around. He understands entertainment and business. And he's a huge personality that Channel 4 and the country fell in love with. Mark Jenkins joins us on the phone now. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. It, it's usually everyone else that has the problem, not me. Well, I've noticed that about your programme, is that you go through life, this is something I need to learn, where it's never your fault and it's everyone else and you keep smiling. How do you find that optimism? Well, I wouldn't say it's never my fault. I mean, sometimes I make mistakes. No, not, not very often. Um, <laughs> but, but, no, no, I mean, you, you have to. I mean, you only get one life. And so if something goes wrong... Um, there's no point in dwelling on it. You just pick yourself up and carry on. Mm. Well, if you're going into a hotel to turn it around and spending money and you don't make that money back, somebody's going to be upset with you. Moving on isn't quite that easy. Yeah, but I didn't... Yeah, but no, I mean, we, we, we didn't spend any money. We, we made... I, I, I made them more money um, to begin with before they spent anything. Right, OK. <laughs> you remember, sort of, when I went in there this year, on the very my very first day in the job, I absolutely packed the bar out. I yeah. filled it. Let's talk about the show. Um, we fell in love with you through the Grosvenor Hotel, which was this talky attraction that had its faults, and your job basically was to polish the turd and make it look as good as it could and get people in. This year you've been back with the Cavendish Hotel, sorting out the entertainment and trying to do the same again. But before that, what were you? Tell us about your life and how you got to this, because you literally came from nowhere in terms of TV and became a sensation overnight. Um, well, well, years and years, my father was always on the stage. He was always an entertainer, so I was sort of, you know, that was the family business, as it were. In fact, most of my family were sort of in that side of the business. So, so I was brought up in that, you know. I mean, when I was four years old, my father sort of taught me to sing and dance and sent me out on the streets busking for money. <laughs> well, you got to earn your tea somehow. <laughs> well, well, exactly. I, I, I never know what happened to the money. I'm hoping there's some big secret trust fund somewhere that will do me for my retirement, but, um, <laughs> but, but who knows. But no, so, so I was sort of brought up in that. That, that sort of whole family atmosphere that that was um but but at the last minute when i was sort of about 16 17 i decided um not to go into the entertainment business at, the, at that point so um I, I went into various businesses and mainly sort of direct sales i was a salesman that, that, that's what I, I was one of those annoying people you know those people that you're just sitting down for tea or you're doing something important and your doorbell goes and there's someone at your door trying to sell you something you've got no interest in buying oh good lord yeah, that was me. It must be a tough job, that. So how do you get someone to buy a bucket and a mop who's not interested? Well, I, I, I could always spill something on the doorstep and show them <laughs> that they really need one. It depends. <laughs> That's what you're selling. <laughs> I mean, I can tell show business is in your blood because, let's face it, you are a show-off. You love to be at the front of the crowd, don't you, and, and whip them up into a frenzy. You enjoy that. No, no, it's not about me enjoying that. I love to see people enjoying themselves. It was in my blood. I, yeah. I was taught to do that when I was four years old. Yeah. And, and then I sort of went off track for about 30-odd years um, in different businesses. And then by default, I ended up buying a hotel. Um, and, and when I bought this hotel, I, I used to employ entertainers. And then I thought, well, why don't I do a very special fun party night and, and stuff like that? So, so slowly, I, I started to sort of entertain the guests in my own hotel. Mm. Most are rubbish, aren't they? I mean, what Phoenix Knights did and Peter Kay by bringing that to the fore, people thought were a joke. But up here in the north, if you go around the clubs, there really are those dreadful acts who are charging 25 quid and they'll put them on just because they're cheap. It's extraordinary. I, mean, I used to get 25 quid for 20 minute spot when I was 13 in 1973. Well, the money's gone down, I'll tell you. That's show business. Oh, maybe I shouldn't go into show business then. No, maybe not. You're coming back with these party shows and that's going to be extraordinary because you're across the UK. Are you going to make them just like on the show where you're the man with the mic and you're going to do the bingo and all that stuff and it's going to be sort of like a throwback to the 70s and just a good old party night? It, it, yeah, it, it's going to be great fun. I mean, I've, I've got loads of daft sort of games I'm hosting and, and, and everything else it, it, it's a full um, it's like on my website when people go to book I'm not telling people everything that's going to happen because you know my, my argument to that is that if you book a, um, a ticket like to go to a theatre that they don't send you a copy of the script in advance for you to read do they? <laughs> it's a good point <laughs> you know, so, 
So when people say, what's going to happen on the party night, I'm not telling you, <laughs> because otherwise it'll spoil it. It's but, a bit like knowing the whole content of a film before you sit and watch it. Could this be some elaborate joke, though, where I pay 20 quid or whatever it is to come and see you, and then nothing happens because it all goes wrong, and that's the big joke? No, not at all. No, 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 no. These, these, are, these are fun. No, no, no. I've, I've, done, I've done them before. I did a few charity ones and different ones last year. So, uh, no, no, no. They're, 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 they're great. But, and something different and unique. I'll tell you, can I tell you the biggest headache? Because normally, when sort of entertainers, people, they go on tour, you know, a manager yeah. or someone sort of books it, you know, you, you know, sort of at a certain level, maybe just, you know, small theatres or whatever around the country, and there's plenty of them. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of it. They just sort of phone up and say, oh, yeah, this date. And then when they've sold enough tickets, they confirm it, and, and it's all fine. Well, because of what I'm doing, I, I'm booking these sort of, um, these venues are sort of, you know, great big, large, sort of, most of them sort of four-star nice hotels because they, they need a ballroom that can hold sort of three or four hundred people with a big dance floor and a stage and yeah. lighting and everything else. And then because of the way it's sort of working out, because I'm sort of seating people a bit like a wedding, it's sort of, you know, banquet style, round tables of ten and then decorating the room and everything else, it literally feels each show is like with the seating plan I have to do and everything else and all the arrangements, um, it's exactly like arranging a wedding. And that's stressful. So how are you coping I'm with it? I'm doing 18 giant weddings. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just, with my track record, I'm just grateful I won't have to pay for 18 divorces afterwards. So um, um, it's quite actually complicated. Well, I'm just thinking this could be the next Channel 4 show, The Wedding Planner, Mark Jenkins. This could be your comeback. I, I think that the worst thing is, is as I said, that some of the hotels are quite posh, you know, these four-star hotels. So mm. you phone them up and say, yes, now I'd like to book your sort of, you know, your... Um, main sort of ballroom and they'd say oh yeah I said well I'd, I'd like to sort of put on a buffet for the people that are coming to the party um, and they say oh yeah we have buffet menus I said no 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 mine's specific you know I want um, you know sausages on sticks um, <laughs> cheese and pineapple on sticks <laughs> and of course volivants <laughs> and, and, and I get this sort of snooty girl sort of on the phone and says um, oh well I'll have to talk to the chef and see if he's prepared to do that what do you mean prepared to do that wow. volivants not a big deal. I wonder if there'll be a lot of your volivants left. <laughs> yeah, the one on the 70s party night on the hotel, yeah, we had a lot of volivants <laughs> left. They so weren't as popular as I thought. Have any hotels said, no, you're not coming, we don't want your type round here? Yes. <laughs> Name them. Come on, this is disgusting. Yes. Shame yes, on them. I'll tell you what, one hotel um, turned me down. Um, and and um, that was it. It was in Liverpool. It was my own fault. I shouldn't have phoned them in the first place because they had a bad experience of being on TV. And as soon as I mentioned that, you know, whatever, that they, I mean, there's no TV cameras going to the parties, but well, as soon as I mentioned it, they panicked. So the Adelphi said, you're not coming. How dare yeah. they? <laughs> did you phone the Adelphi and say, right, I'll take my business somewhere else? Or did you try and defend yourself and say, no, no, this is going to be a glamorous affair? No, I, I thought if, if they're... If they're they were worried that, um, I don't know what they were worried about, really. I, I think they're just paranoid. Yeah. They were literally paranoid. Um, what a shame. But, but, it, but it's their loss, because yeah. um, um, Liverpool have only just um, sort of re redone, sort of uh, relaunched sort of Liverpool, because I, I wasn't then going to offer it as a venue. And then I've had so many people screaming at me for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, I've only just put it on. And I, I'm within the first sort of three days of going on sale, I've sold half the tickets anyway, so... Well, I'm going to come along because I think this is going to be great fun. It's a bit of nonsense and we need that in life, don't we? What I love about you is your optimism and no matter how bad it gets, you fight forward and forward. My favourite episode, I think, was the boxing um, episode. You'd arranged this big night and it turns out you hadn't got a licence and couldn't do it, but you did it anyway. And that's just magical, isn't it? That, that you're going to have people sit there. In my defence... That wasn't my fault. None of it's ever your fault, is it, Mark? I had no idea. Right, have you got an end? I mean, it, it wasn't boxing, it was wrestling. Well, I had no idea that wrestling counted as fighting. I thought it was like an act. <laughs> you, you know, like a circus act. They're just sort of playing, aren't they? I didn't know they were fighting for real. Are you amazed by the reception you've had from the British public? Because we've fallen in love with you, and, and I get that there's a certain irony with some of it. The reaction is extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, it, it's quite... Um, I'll, I'll tell you the worst thing about sort of people knowing who you are, because what you must remember is, you know, when people watch me on TV, it, it, it goes one way. I can't see they're watching me, so I don't know who they are. Okay? Yes. And, and, and the bizarre thing, my problem is, that, and, and what's sort of odd for me, is I have no memory. My, I'm absolutely useless, right? And, and especially sort of faces and names, I just, I'm just not great, you know? Mm. You know, some people, are, I could never be a policeman because a policeman is meant to have a good sort of memory for names <laughs> and certainly faces, you know? But, 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 but I wouldn't. 
I, I'd let the thieves all walk past me because I wouldn't recognise them, but so I'd never be a policeman. <laughs> so my problem is people sort of come up to me and say, oh, hello, you know, how's your mum? And, you know, sort of things like that. And they instantly talk to me as if they know me. Yeah. And Which is great. The, what the problem is, I go into panic mode because I'm rushing my brain thinking, D- do I know you? Am I meant to know you? Are you a family member? Are? Yes. <laughs> and, and so that, that's the only drawback for me. It's because my memory. So when people come and say hello, as I said, I, go, I do. I go into panic mode because I think, do I know them? Am I meant to know them? Mm. And of course, I'm not really because they watch me. But like I said, the TV isn't like a two-way mirror. I can't see who's watching me. So I have no idea that it was just for the telly. <laughs> Your tenacity is amazing as well. I mean, to come back from the Grove note was extraordinary because that didn't go so well. And in business, let's face it, it's tough to make a profit, especially in hotels these days. You keep fighting. What's going to be next? I mean, after the tour, are you going to do another version of the Cavendish where you take on another hotel or have they got other things planned? Um, the, the answer to that question is, um, is it the last you've seen in on me, of me on TV? Um, probably not. Um the, the daft thing about TV world, which I don't understand, is it's all a big secret, right? Yes. You're not allowed to discuss anything. You're not allowed to say anything until it's all officially announced and happens. Yes. You, you're not allowed to say anything. I've got no idea why it's a secret, because who else is going to do, who's going to copy me and do what I'm doing? Um, <laughs> so after that question, I'm not allowed to say anything. Um, is it the last you've seen on me on TV? Um, I, you know, Probably not. I hope not, because you're infinitely entertaining. And let's face it, to make five or six hours out of one man trying to put on a bingo night is unthinkable that it could make great TV, but it does. You are captivating as a human being. Are you annoying to live with in real life, or can you tone it down? Oh, God, no, I'm a nightmare. (laughs) I'm an absolute nightmare. (laughs) Uh, The problem is, I often don't switch off. Yes, I've noticed that. That, that, that's the problem so um, so, so I don't switch off so. you're like that Duracell bunny aren't you while everybody else is snoozing you're still wanting to keep going yes yeah, yeah no I, mean, I was beaving away sort of last night doing things as all half past two in the morning I got in from this party thing it was um, I, I get invited to parties and odd things and, and that was strange um, guess who I bumped into last night go on I, and I was so surprised when I, when I, when I saw him because I thought he was dead go on um, Nick Cotton Oh yes, no, he's not dead. No, I saw him running in a park in the newspapers. Yes, he's still no, with yeah, us. No, I saw him last night. I had a photo <laughs> take with him. He's not really dead. <laughs> so maybe I wonder if the EastEnders are going to do a Dallas, and in a year or two. Um, he's going to come out the shower and it was all a dream it's very possible it's very very possible I mean in in the grand list of celebs who I know many of which follow you on Twitter and things like that who's been the most impressive you've met and who have you enjoyed meeting the most um oh god see I'm going to get into trouble now because I'll I'll not mention some yeah that that, that's what's been amazing and what's been amazing is there's so many sort of real celebrities that sort of have got hooked on the show Um, and and that's quite you know it's it's quite bizarre when sort of real famous people ask me if I can have my photo taken with them that's brilliant that's absolutely bizarre (laughs) you know Um, absolutely bizarre so no no I mean I've I've met some um, great people I mean you know sort of um, Anton Dex Stephen Mulhern um, who's um, oh goodness um, the the Radio 1 sort of DJ Scott Mills and um, well when Chris Moyles was there in fact, even Scott Mills, he actually came and stayed at the Grosvenor um, for, for his birthday. <laughs> so, and, and There's no accounting for taste, and, is yeah, it? No, so I've met quite, quite a few sort of, um, and, and been on different shows. I mean, the, the other week I was on, um, what was I on? Um, um, Reality Bites and I had um, Emma Willis running her fingers through my hair. Good Lord. People would pay good money I, I for that. I knew that was going to happen. Good Lord. You never know what's around the corner in show business. I was told I was going to be locked in a room with her and she'd be blindfolded, but um, in the end, it wasn't quite what I expected. (laughs) You saw the episode. I I did indeed. Listen, I love talking to you. I'm I'm going to meet you when you come to Nottingham and we'll do a face-to-face thing because it's much better talking in person. I'm a huge fan. Congratulations. If people want to find out about this tour for the uh, party nights with Mark Jenkins from the hotel, give us your website. Yeah, it's um, it's very good. I I made the website myself. It took me forever. Ever, um, and I've got a good name. It's partynighttickets.com, and that's plural tickets, all one word. Partynighttickets.com. I mean, how good is that? That that website 
was available. Do you know what I love about you the most is that you just said, I did a website, and do you know, it's really good. You have an inner confidence, don't you? I love that. I don't have that, you see. I think everything I do is mostly rubbish. Oh, for me, the website is brilliant. I can't believe I've achieved it, you know? I love that. It's one of these where you sort of, it's a cheap one. You, you just sort of sign up, whatever, and then you have to make all the pages yourself. And then, you know, with 18 venues, I've had to sort of list all that, and the booking sites, and then how I've, I don't know how I've done it. Are you literally having to do everything for this tour, from booking the venues to arranging the food to setting the tables to dressing the tables? Are you going to have to do everything yourself? Well, I'm, I might get an odd helper. I might sort of get, get an odd helper because otherwise it's going to be a bit of a nightmare, you know? I mean, when we're dressing the room, I'll tell you what my manager found online. I shouldn't say all these because I'll spoil sort of the whole thing. Um, but g g to help dress the room, guess what we found online the other day? And I had no idea that they... That they made such a thing. Go ahead. Big inflatable alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because, you know, the, the episode where I took the alpaca in the lift because I couldn't get it down the stairs, you know. Blow up alpacas. Listen, I, I was going to stop this interview here, but I've got to ask, was that a setup? Because when the, when you nearly trapped its head in the lift door, I nearly fell off my chair. It was one of the funniest bits of TV I've ever seen. It's hysterical. Well, the lift door wasn't meant to close. Of course that wasn't meant to happen. I was a bit worried. <laughs> Do you realise, though, that it is a bit strange that a man's bringing alpaca into a hotel just for entertainment purposes only? No, it was the family fund. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah, no, it was a bit because I didn't actually want alpacas. Um, I actually asked for camels. <laughs> and, and I suppose it's just as well because they wouldn't have got in the lift. No, they get the ump if you take them in a lift. Will there, yeah, be, any, no, 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 will there be any live animals during the live tour? No, that's why I'm going for the blow-up alpacas. Yes. I, I like an inflatable myself. I think these posh four-star hotels and most of them are that I'm sort of holding these party nights at. I think if I turn up with a little sort of uh, animal circus, I think some of them might pull a face. Yeah. Well, balls to the Adelphi. Their loss and Liverpool's gain that you'll be going somewhere else. You can find out all the tour dates by going to the website. Just put in Mark Jenkins Live Tour and you'll find it. Mark, really love talking to you. I'll see you when you come to Nottingham. Brilliant. Look forward to it.